Right to be read podcast, episode number four. Interview with nonfiction bestselling author Derek Alsen. You are listening to the Right to Be Read podcast, and this is your host, Ani Alexander. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Right to Be Read podcast, the podcast which encourages and inspires writers become authors. Today, I'm going to talk with Derek Olson. Derek is a husband, father, and number one best-selling author. Derek and his wife Carrie encourage married couples to have better conversations about money. You can grab the free ebook Four and a Half Conversation Starters on his website derekandcarrie.com. Hello Derek, how are you? I'm great, Annie. Thanks for having me. How are you? Uh, I'm fine, too. Thanks a lot for agreeing to talk to us. And uh, it's a pleasure to have you in my newborn podcast called Right to be Read. Um, so today I would like to talk about things which will be of interest to our listeners who are mainly either newbie writers or writers who would like to become a better writer, let's say. So uh, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm talking to people like you who have a certain experience with writing, self-publishing, who have achieved quite a lot and who will be sharing their expertise with, with the listeners. Great. So what I would like to know first, maybe a little bit about your background. How did you start writing and how it all started? Did you have a day job before or what were you doing before you became a writer? Yes, uh, before I became a writer, I did have a day job and I did not like my day job very much. <laughs> Um, it wasn't a good fit for me, and so I just decided to quit after thinking about it for a, quite a while. And so I quit. And uh, at the time, I had just gotten married to my wife, and we lived off of her salary um, and a little bit of savings for about a year, maybe a year and a half, uh, just to make it by. Our expenses were low at the time, so we were able to do it. Mm -hmm. And what led me to writing was I had – what I quit my job to do was become a financial coach to teach people about money and budgets. Mm -hmm. And I was doing some coaching and I had a website um, and I had a few clients, not very many at the beginning. And the materials that I used when I was um, coaching my clients about how to budget their money – I just, after a little while, I had a lot. I had a lot of worksheets and a lot of um, stories and, and stuff that I was, materials mm -hmm. that I was using. And I one day I just thought, you know what? If I just um, organized this stuff a little bit better and wrote, wrote um, maybe an intro and, a, and, and some, some other con, you know, content, I could, I could put it all together and I could publish a book with it. So that's where it all started. Okay, so actually uh, you were not from those who um, dreamed to become a writer, but it just, you know, happened uh, relatively accidentally. Yeah, a little bit. I, I was not, I didn't start out mm -hmm. wanting to be a writer, that's for sure. And I kind of stumbled upon it like accident, on accident. I just thought, hey, I, I, could, I could put all this stuff together and then I'd have a book to sell and I can sell it all over the country. Uh, really all over the world, um, instead of just to the people that I was coaching face-to-face, one-on-one. -face, uh, mm -hmm. -on -one. So yeah, I kind of did stumble upon it accidentally, and I realized that I really enjoyed it, and I had some success with my first book, and uh, so now I'm, I'm writing a little bit more and, and coming out with some other, some other books. Okay, so you're writing purely nonfiction books. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. Very, very much nonfiction. <laughs> mm -hmm. I see. So uh, when, when you had this material and you uh, got a book out of it later on, uh, what were your next steps? Like, you, you, I suppose you self-published that book, right? Yes, I did. Uh, so uh, you, uh, by that time, did you know about self-publishing or did you learn about how to do it yourself? I mean, how did you go about that? Yeah. So everyone listening probably um, – so I I'm guessing that anyone listening has either thought about writing a book or maybe you've already self-published a book probably. Mm -hmm. And so everyone knows how difficult and um, – 
and confusing and mysterious that can be. At least it was for me. You, you, I remember sitting there thinking, okay, I've got this idea for a book, but then it just seemed like this impossibly long and difficult road to actually get it published. Mm-hmm. There's, there's so much that you have to learn. And so where I started was actually um, a guy named Dan Miller who wrote 48 Days to the Work You Love. Mm-hmm. He has a product called Right to the Bank. And it helps you, it helps anyone start um, and, and complete the entire publishing process from writing the book to um, publishing it. And it's actually heavy on how to sell your book. Uh-huh. That's, that's the focus of this, uh, uh, of that product, uh, Right to the Bank. So that's, that's where I started because I needed a roadmap. I needed some directions and some instructions on how to do all this. And then really, I just figured it out every single step along the way. I thought, okay, it seems like the next thing I need to do is this. And then I would go search on the internet and find out how to do whatever that was, all the way up through editing um, and formatting and a book cover. And I did a, a physical book as well as Kindle, so mm-hmm. I had to have a, a, a graphic artist um, create the cover for the physical book upload all the files and make sure everything was correct. Even the, the little ISBN number there, mm-hmm. gosh, there's, there's so many things that you have to do right. And I just figured it out, uh, step by step along the way. Okay. I see. And, uh, what were the results of your first book? You said they were good. So, uh, yeah. you, you had nice results and that kind of encouraged you to continue and to go on with, uh, creating new content. Yeah, the first book, it, the, my first book was called The Four Week Financial Turnaround. And I was I was I published it as a physical book and then about uh 2 months later I came out with the Kindle version. And I was really surprised by how well the Kindle version did. I I am not much of an e-reader. I I don't have a Kindle myself. I I like the real physical book. Mm-hmm. Um and so I just didn't realize how big the Kindle market was, <laughs> which which sound kind of, it sounds kind of silly now because um, like everyone knows how big Kindle is. You you can sell so many books on Kindle, and so I put it up on Kindle, and um, I did the the free days. I give it a, I get I did the Kindle Select program and gave it away for free for uh-huh. two days, and it and it I gave away just thousands and thousands of copies. I think. I think I gave away, um, I, I think it was 5,000 during those first two days. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and a couple of months later, oh, and then immediately after that, it, it went to number one in the, um, the budgeting category. And it, and it even got up to number two in the personal finance category, which is a lot bigger category. Mm-hmm. And I think one of the other things that helped me um, – with the success of that first book was I had a really big launch team that I had put together. I had 88 people uh, oh. who I had mailed. I mailed 88 people a physical copy of my book uh-huh. um, that were on my launch team. And they have really helped me spread the word and, and tell other people about the book. And so I think that's probably um, the number one thing that helped me was my launch team. Yeah, I mean, you you had a big support there <clears throat> because eighty eight is 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 quite a, a big number. If uh, if they all supported you during the launch, yeah. I mean, concentrated all their efforts in the same period of time, apparently it it should have been resulted in in a very positive. Yeah, it did. Okay, so uh, did you concentrate only on Amazon platform, or are you selling your books also on other platforms as well? Yeah, good question. I I did only Amazon for that first book mm-hmm. because I had heard when I was doing my research about, especially about, um, well, so I used Create Space for the physical book, mm-hmm. and that's you know that's associated with Amazon. Amazon, yes. Yeah, and so it, I really enjoyed Create Space. It was very, it was, I mean, it, it took a lot of effort, but it was very easy to use. Um, and I was really happy with the way the physical book turned out. And then I used Kindle, of course, for, mm-hmm. and that's you know associated with Amazon, because when I was doing my research, um, a lot of people said you know Kindle just dominates the uh, e-reader market. Yes, it's mm-hmm. it's just so enormous. 
And also, I, I think it's uh, at the time. I'm sure. I think it's still this way. Uh, if you want to do the Kindle Select program, you, you're only allowed to sell your book through Kindle. If you want to be in the Kindle Select program, yes, it's still the same. Okay, it's still that way. Yes. And so that that was a huge benefit to me. Um, the Kindle Select program just really helped me so much, and and I can't really say this because I don't know, but. It, it seemed like the Kindle Select program helped me so much that it it made it worth it to not have my books on any other platform because all of the other platforms are just so much smaller within mm-hmm. the market. Mm-hmm. So I, I just wouldn't have had as many sales. I, and I, I actually, like I said, I don't know that for sure because you know I can't go back and experiment like that. But I, I didn't do any of the other platforms and. I've had people tell me that they do have success on all of, you know, Nook and iBooks and and whatever else is out there. People do have success with those other platforms. Mm -hmm. But I can't say for myself, I didn't do it myself. I just stuck with Kindle only and it worked out really well for me. Okay, I see. So how many books uh, do you have right now published? Well, Well, right now I actually only have two. Um, that are that are published right now. So I have that one on finance, the four week financial turnaround, and then I have another book that's actually a book about how to write, publish, and and market a book. So what I did was I took everything that I learned, uh-huh. um, good and bad, from my first book, and I just and I wrote another book because I, I had been keeping all these notes. I, I I took tons and tons and tons of notes of what worked and what didn't. And how to do this, you know, how to um, edit, how to publish, how to market, how to sell, um, all that kind of stuff. And I just wrote another book because I had I had it all written down anyway. Mm-hmm. So it, did, it didn't take me a huge, huge effort to, to put all that together. And I released that one on Kindle only. I didn't do a print book on that one. But so anyway, I only have two books out right now. But I'm, I'm writing another one now. And I have plans – for really I have plans in the works for three that are going to come out maybe over the next two years. Okay. Well, I read uh, the book about how to write and publish and sell uh, books. And um, I, I really liked it. And I'll, I'll tell you exactly why and what, because there are so many how-to books these days, especially about uh, writing and publishing. And uh, they're quite similar. Some of them are very similar to each other. But uh, your book was different in a sense that I really liked the... Um, tone of voice of the book because it was very friendly it um, uh, although it uh, kind of started explaining things from the very beginning and there were many things which I already knew but um, it it was written in such a friendly way that you you kind of enjoyed reading what you already knew even so um, and also there was some kind of notes of encouragement during the whole book so (laughs) It, 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 I mean, it was very positive and it kind of, while reading it, you feel like, you know, I should try this. I, I think it will work. I mean, this this was like the attitude people might be getting from reading that book. And I really liked that approach because very often um, nonfiction books tend to be quite dry and oh, they, they right. just present the facts and the uh, the topic and uh, they're not really inspiring at all actually although maybe they they shouldn't be but still i mean there is nothing really um emotional in that so mm. you don't get the um, any connection with the writer actually and here there was this conversational tone and it, and it was a bit different from from the dry non-fiction books and that that really attracted well oh, that's that's great i'm glad to hear you say that you know when, when i like i said when i wrote that one i um i had just come out of uh self-publishing my first book and I remember being so discouraged um, with the process. Some some days, it it was just really difficult. As as anyone who's self published their own book, you probably mm-hmm. know that there are days when you just want to quit. 
And so um, maybe that's where some of the encouragement comes from because I, I was perhaps maybe I was speaking to myself and remembering my experience where, you know, it's a really long road to self-publish a book and, and, it, and you need, a, at least I needed a lot of encouragement along the way to keep going, keep going. Mm-hmm. Because even if you get 80% done, it, it doesn't count. And if you get 85% done, it doesn't count. You got to go all the way until it's actually up on Amazon or else it really just doesn't count. And it, it seems like there's very little reward along the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I, I suppose the process itself is rewarding and that's true, but it's not the same as the reward when you're finally finished and it's finally out and, and up available for sale. Um, until you reach that point, at least for me, until I reached that point, I needed a lot of encouragement. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, uh, maybe that was the reason, but the encouragement was there in your book all along the way. So okay. let's see. I mean, I, I hope it will help the readers uh, while they will be writing their first books. I so. uh, and I think also it's a bit difficult and people need encouragement because until you self-publish your book uh, and even af- just after you, you've you done it, you never know what the results will be. So, I mean, there is absolutely no guarantee that even if you've done everything perfectly, uh, you know, it will work out or you right. will you will have a great success. So you, it, it's, it's a try you take and, uh, you know, there's no guarantee. Maybe it won't work that time. So I guess we need also encouragement after self-publishing publishing the book right. to write the next one if that one doesn't work just you know take the lessons out of the first one see uh, i'll try to understand why didn't it work and just you know fix the things and and start all over again right right absolutely so uh you said you had a website and you had clients and you were coaching was that the main platform uh, where you were um getting readers for your books or did you do anything else uh, with the marketing of the books you've self-published? Yeah, good question because, um, you know, it it really doesn't matter a whole lot how good your book is or how much time you spent writing the book or all of that. Um, Well, well, that that matters as far as the book itself and how good the book is. Mm -hmm. But if you want to sell books, that is a totally different thing. Um, there's a, there's a lot. Of, I mean, as we all know, there's a lot of bad books out there that sell a whole lot of copies. Yeah. And then there's a lot of good books out there that don't sell very many copies. So it, there's sort of a disconnect. It, the book can't only be good. Of course, that helps. Of course. Mm-hmm. But if but marketing a book is a completely different thing that's sort of separate from whether the book is any good or not. <laughs> yeah, and um, yes, and I would like to say that marketing a book, uh, book marketing is not exactly what you learn even if you study marketing. So it has lots of specific things in it that you still have, even if you are good in marketing in general, there are lots of specifics that you have to learn. Yeah, absolutely. Um, And it's kind of, you know, it's kind of a mystery. Of course, there's some things that that you can do. And I, I can talk about the things that I did um, that I know worked really well. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there's some things that I'm not, I'm not sure, you know, how well that worked or or not. But a a few of the things that I did, number one, like I said, I had a launch team. So I had reached out to uh, about a hundred people and and I ended up with 88 and I thought that was pretty good. I was, I was surprised by it. I thought I'd get maybe 20 or 30 people, but but who Excuse were those people? I mean, uh, whom did you approach initially? Who yeah. were those 100? Your friends you know, or, or who did you approach? You know, I, I just put a general uh, messages out there everywhere. I didn't approach people specifically. Um, well, I think I did, actually. I approached a few people specifically. But uh, I, I just put a post up on Facebook, um, a post up on various other website communities that I'm involved in. I, and I, I had been online for a while at this point, making a lot of um, connections and relationships, forming some relationships with people. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of these people were, you know, a lot of the online community is really supportive yes. um, of each other. Generally, everyone really wants everyone else to be successful. Yes. 
And so, yeah, I got a really good response. And those people, I, I mean, I, I just owe them so much because they were so great. And I put those 88 people on an email list um, with their permission, of course. And I asked for their mailing address and I mailed them a book. I think that was probably the best thing that I could have done was actually mail them a book mm -hmm. um, instead of just, hey, you're on my launch team, you know, you know, tell people about my book. Um, I think getting the book in the mail and I did a handwritten note for everyone too. Mm -hmm. I think they, I think they really appreciate that. And, and I would see people posting pictures whenever they got the book in the, in the mail, they would post pictures. Mm -hmm. And, and so that helped because people were seeing my book online yeah, all, all over the place. And, uh, so that really helped. And then, um, the, another thing I did was I did a online book tour and I think that really helped as well. Uh -huh. Um, and, and I talk about that in, in my book, um, uh, the one about how to how to yeah. write a book and publish a book. And the idea is really simple. And um, like for for example, uh, you and I are here talking right now um, about books. And so if I if I was on tour, or if let's say that I had just released a book and I was going to do a whole bunch of podcast interviews and guest blog posts and stuff like that, the only thing you would have to do is just call it a tour. You, mm -hmm. you just say, hey, guys, I'm on tour. Uh, I'm going to be on this podcast and this podcast and, and I'm going to be on this website and in this article mm -hmm. and just call it a tour. And it's no hard, It's no more work than that and kind of post, you know, tour stop number one, tour stop number two. And, it, and what it does is it makes it look like there's something bigger going on, mm -hmm. that there's, there's a big event going on. There's, there's some excitement instead of just – well, I'm on this podcast and I'm on that blog post and, and I'm over here. Um, that's fine. But if you call it a tour, I think it attracts a lot more attention. Okay, I see. And what about the books? Are they What part of your business are they? Because I, I assume since you're also coaching and doing some other things, uh, you, you most probably have a big picture of your business and with right. different components. So what's the portion of books in there and what role do they play? Yeah, good question. Um, let's see, how do I answer that? So my, the book, the my first book... Um, that came out about a year and a half ago. So it's been a little while now. So the sales have, have gone down quite a bit since back then. The, the first six months of the book um, did, did pretty well. And then what actually what happened, and I think I, I, I admit this, <laughs> it, it, sort of a confession in the book, uh, the one about how to write a book, um, mm -hmm. I, I kind of got burned out on marketing my book. And I sort of quit marketing. Uh -huh. and. Right when I quit marketing, the sales went down. The sales started going down. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> so I just because uh, I put forth a huge effort, a lot of energy, um, and and I got tired. And so one of the things that I learned was to kind of maybe ma take a more even, steady pace when it comes to marketing. I was going all out for a few months, and I just got tired. Mm -hmm. I see. So. But but to answer your question, I, I kind of got off there. Um, to answer your question, the the book sales now are 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 a pretty small part of the business. But I have um, I've I've taken everything that I've learned over the past really two years of selling book these those two books, and I've learned a lot because there are certain things that you can't learn until you really get out there and do it. And now that I've got two books under my belt, I've, uh, you learn every, even more each time, mm -hmm. um, especially on the marketing side. And so for this next book, this next book that I'm, I'm actually, I, I actually started writing it already, um, the couple of rough drafts. This next book is going to be um, focused on money and marriage and specifically, so I've got my niche down a little bit to married couples um, who want to handle their money together. Mm -hmm. And well, we've got some marketing ideas for this book that I'm really excited about that, that I just know are, are going to be fantastic. And so I'm looking forward to, to this next book um, doing, doing even better and, and selling very well. Oh, very 
very good. Since you mentioned marriage, um, did I understand correctly that you you're working with your wife? Yes. Together. Yeah, yeah. So another thing that that we did just really quickly. Um, my previous book was under a different brand, so it, that brand was called Beatnik Budget, and I just talked about personal finance on that website. Mm-hmm. Since then, what we learned with that brand was it was a little bit too general, and it wasn't focused enough. Uh-huh. And, and so since then, I've, I've, I've basically started a brand new business, or a brand new brand if is a better way to put it. And uh, this this new brand is specifically focused on married couples who uh, who want to manage their money well together. Mm-hmm. And so we brought Carrie, my wife, in, and and so now it's just Carrie, me, and Carrie together. Um, I mean, our website is even called is even Derek and Carrie dot com. That's our website. Yeah. So we really put me and my wife Carrie at the forefront of the business and the brand. And that's one of the reasons why um, I haven't come out with – it's been a little while since I come out with a book is because we sort of put everything on pause for a little while while we completely rebrand our new business, again, based on everything we've learned, what's working, what's not working. And uh, now we've got that up and running and established. We've got our website and a podcast and all that. So we've got all of that established and now we're moving forward and we're creating a platform uh, for whenever we do launch the book, it'll have a, a really good support system there, a really good platform there to, uh, to hopefully do well. Okay. Well, this is what I'm, I'm hearing over and over again from, from many, many writers whom I've interviewed so far. Uh, everyone is telling that uh, one should have a platform and one should have an audience first before putting the book out there because that's yes. something that is absolutely required uh, if, as part of the success because without that it's uh, much much harder to uh, to succeed and uh, to make your book a successful one so the, this is uh, so you mentioned this again and it comes over and over again and um, in that case what's your advice I mean okay uh, someone wants to write a book he hasn't started yet he has the idea he's going to write it sooner or later but he doesn't have an audience he doesn't have a platform he's starting from scratch what should the uh, sequence of steps the action steps be that's a really good question that's <laughs> that's a really big question actually um yeah but if we if we break it down maybe and 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 talk about it in sort of a simplistic way you've got to have a platform first before you can sell any books because you won't have an audience to sell your books to if you don't have a platform. So, um, but, but gosh, to answer the question, how do you build a platform? That's, that's a lot more difficult, uh, to answer. And I I think, um, if I was going to answer that, I would say you really just need to get your message out there. That that's what I think the most important part of a platform is, is, is the message being, honest being transparent um what are you you know what what am i going to benefit from uh joining your tribe and 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 being on you know being on your platform basically or watching you deliver your message from your platform what am i how how is my life going to be better and so the more you get that out there and if it's good and the and the message that's that's one thing we found was we needed to refine our message and get a little bit more specific with our message. Mm-hmm. And when you start doing that, you'll you'll start, you know, people will just start see some of your stuff and if it's good, again it's got to be good. They'll be attracted to that and they'll find their way back to your website. Maybe you've, you've got something to give away for free when they sign up for your newsletter. Um, there's, there's a lot of different things that you can do for your platform. Um, a specific example for Carrie and I is we, we have our podcast now. And we actually worked with a branding coach when we recreated our new business. And, and our branding coach, um, he, he's an expert branding, branding coach. Mm-hmm. And he did a great job helping us 
refine our message and our brand. And uh, as a result of that, one of the things we did, we actually had a podcast in the in the past, but we we deleted everything. You can't find it anymore. And this new podcast is much better, more focused. And the results of the new podcast, because it's more focused, the number of subscribers and downloaders is already way above where our old podcast ever was after a year. We had our old podcast for a year. We've had this one for um, four months, and it's already way above. Mm-hmm. And and it's a result of our our message and our brand and our focus. It's, it's much more refined now. And I say all that to say that's how you can start building a platform because now we have thousands of people listening to our podcast that weren't there before and when we announce that we're um, writing a book and releasing a book, now we've got somebody to sell it to. We've got some people that, that we're having a conversation with already mm-hmm. and, and we can set, then sell a book to those people. Whereas if you come out with a book first, there's just nobody there to, to buy your book. Yeah. Well, it, it, it brings me to the thought that actually the um, – writers who dream about uh, only writing the books uh, will have to get away from that illusion because these days, uh, unless you're Stephen King or some other very successful, very famous writer, besides writing the book, there are so many other things, especially in marketing, that you also have to do after you've written the book. So these days, only writing the book doesn't work anymore. (laughs) No, no, it really doesn't. And, and, that, and that depends on what your goals are. If, if your goal is to just write your book and maybe publish it, maybe not, um, give it away, and, and you're not really worried about sales or making money, then that's fine. But I think a lot of people are in it you know, to make money, to sell their book, um, and that's, that's a perfectly uh, good thing to do. So it, it, it does depend a little bit on what your goals are. Can, mm-hmm. can determine how much marketing you need to do. Yeah, well, uh, I, I think that uh, mostly, uh, and it's, uh, it's mainly uh, for both nonfiction and fiction writers, most of them would like to uh, have it as uh, the only thing they would like to do, like a, yeah. a full-time thing. So they see this as an escape from the corporate world, from the day, uh, daytime job, etc., etc. So they are hoping that peri- with the time they will reach the stage when they could afford quitting their job and uh, basing all, all their activities on writing and selling books. So for that, I guess, uh, you know, just writing will not be enough no definitely not <laughs> <laughs> okay so um and do you have any daily routines or i, I mean how do you keep your productivity up because apparently you're uh, balancing many different components of your business yeah yeah that's that's another really good question that's something that i struggle with actually mm-hmm. um <laughs> i sort of Sometimes I feel like I get up in the morning <laughs> and I just think, okay, what what should I do today? And I have no plan. Uh-huh. Um, but other times I'm really focused. And for example, when it comes to writing, I don't I don't do a whole whole lot of writing unless I'm uh, on a project or writing a book or maybe an article or a, or a guest blog post or something like that. Um, I'll, I'll go several days, maybe even a week or two without writing a whole lot. And mm-hmm. then I'll get super focused and do nothing but writing for mm-hmm. a, a month or even two um, and just write almost every single day for hours. I kind of get obsessed with it a little bit and get focused. But it helps me to have a goal that I'm heading towards um, a, a, some sort of an outcome or a result Mm-hmm. that I'm heading towards. And when I set a goal, then I don't have to think in the morning, okay, what should I do today? I already know what I need to do that day. And it helps me focus and schedule what I'm going to do. And about every week or two, I take, I take a, an hour or two or, um, or maybe even three and 
and just sort of reorganize and reorient myself mm-hmm. uh, as far as where I'm heading in my business overall. Am I, am I doing enough um, marketing? Am I doing enough writing? Am I doing enough um, just reaching out to key people um, in my market? You know, maybe, you know, I just went through a season of reaching out to people who work at magazines and, and um, uh, newspapers. Mm-hmm. And I also just went through a season of reaching out to other authors. Mm-hmm. And, and so making connections, I suppose, and networking yeah. is really important. Yeah, these and, days it is, yes. Oh, absolutely. Because, um, I, I, I mean, almost everything, almost all of my success really has been a result of, of reaching out and, and uh, networking with other people. Um, you know, just it's, it's, it's all about who knows you, not who you know. Yeah. So you might be following somebody online and, and you know who they are, but they don't know who you are. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so Yeah, absolutely. And it, yeah, and it, it might even feel like they know who you are. Um, because you follow them online and you go to their website or whatever, but that's not the same as them knowing who you are. And, uh, so that's really important too. And I try to balance all that stuff as best as I can. And it can, it can sometimes be frustrating because I'm not sure if I'm doing enough marketing or enough, um, networking or enough writing because there's not really a standard Mm -hmm. as to, to compare myself to. How, how do I know if I'm doing enough marketing or writing or, or if the balance is correct? It's, it's really kind of hard to tell. And that can be frustrating, but I try not to keep it from, I, I try not to keep that uh, from, from, you know, letting myself move forward. Mm, okay. And if you didn't have to keep the balance, which would you, uh, which do you enjoy doing most oh. out of those? That's a, that's a really good question. If I didn't have to, uh, keep that balance. You know that that's funny. I, 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 you know, there's two things, maybe three that come to mind Mm -hmm. when you ask that question. Number one, I think is actually writing because I, I actually, I really do enjoy taking my computer to the coffee shop and just writing. I really do enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And then number two, I really enjoy reaching out to people and networking um, I, I, I just like meeting new people and learning what other people are up to and about and what they're all about and what their business is about and, and how, you know, how, what's working for them and what's not and just brainstorming, um, business ideas. So that's, that's another thing I would do. And then number three, I really enjoy, uh, doing the podcast with my wife we we have a lot of fun. Uh, uh-huh. I, that's probably the thing. It, you know, if I could answer that question in a different way, now that I'm thinking of it, podcasting to me is just fun. Uh, I just have a blast podcasting. Um, reaching out to other people and networking and and getting to know new people and and keeping up with people that I know that to me is fun. So it doesn't feel like work at all. Uh-huh. Podcast podcasting, reaching out to people that doesn't feel like work at all. Now, when it comes to writing, sometimes it's fun and sometimes it's work. Uh huh. Yeah, it's it's a lot of work. Even if you're enjoying it and and it's fun, it's a lot of work. And there are some days where I just think, "Gosh, I just really don't want to write today. I I just not in the mood for it. I don't feel inspired." Mm-hmm. And and on those days, sometimes I just force myself to do it, and. And so it's not like, like the, those others that are just fun. I, I sometimes realize that writing, I have to, I just have to write my book, Mm -hmm. um, for the, for the sake of my business. I just have to. And so if it's not particularly fun that day, well, then I just have to do it. And it kind of feels like work. So I guess I kind of have a love-hate relationship (laughs) Uh with with writing. Well, at least you have strong feelings about it anyway. (laughs) Right, right. And um, so when you don't feel inspired, where do you get the inspiration from? Oh, man. Another good question. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there, 
there are some days I think I talk about this in, in, in my book on how to, how to write a book. Um, mm-hmm. there's some days where I don't feel like writing. And the funny thing is I'll, I'll, I'll just say, you know, I just have to, I, I'm just going to crank out, you know, a one, even if I just did one page, that would be good today. Even just one. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'll go to the coffee shop and I'll just sit there and I just think, I just really don't want to do this. <laughs> and I just sit there and I'll just think and I'll just think about some stuff and, and then I'll think about, you know, I really want to finish this book and how great that'll be when, I, when I've got this book. And if I just do one page, then it's just one page less that I have to worry about. And so I'll start writing and most of the time, I'll get about 15 minutes into writing and then I, I, then I realize I'm having fun again. Mm-hmm. And then I, I realize that, hey, you know, this is enjoyable. And the funny thing about that is if I had just went with my initial feeling for the day and thought, you know, I'm just not really in the mood and just took the day off, then I wouldn't have gotten 15 minutes in to where I started enjoying it. And then I, and I've got, you know, however many pages for the day done. And I'm, and then I, at the end of the, at the end of my writing session, I feel really good and I'm in a good mood and I'm happy and I'm encouraged. But so that, that's kind of an interesting thing that I noticed, Mm -hmm. um, that if you just get started a little bit, uh, it, it can turn out to be enjoyable. So I suppose I'm motivated or inspired to answer your question I guess I'm inspired by success, and so I know that it's hard work. Writing a book is is work, so I know that I've got that in the back of my mind always. This is work, Mm -hmm. and I know that it's not, you know, the way they make it look in the movies. You know, where you're writing your book and it's all romantic. (laughs) (laughs) It can it can be, but I know that it's work, and so I I go in with that attitude that, okay, I'm going to roll up my sleeves and I'm going to get to work mm-hmm. and I'm motivated by success. And so that all those combinations kind of lead to me being inspired to keep moving forward. Uh-huh. I see. Okay. So in that case, what would be your final encouraging words or quotes or advice to those who just started or to those who are in the process of writing a book but they have those days then when they uh, <laughs> they don't feel like writing at all you know what i'm going to let somebody else who's a lot better at answering that question uh, i'm going to mention somebody else and that person is stephen pressfield who wrote a book called The War of Art. Have you, mm-hmm, have you read mm-hmm. that book? Yes. That book is, has, has just, oh, I can't even tell you how good that book was and, and what kind of motivation and inspiration that book is. So that would be, that's going to be my answer. <laughs> okay. Is, is read The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. That book really puts the spotlight on the work aspect um, of art um, he talks about writing a book or any other kind of art. So he talks about it being work, uh, but also fulfilling and inspiring and romantic all at the same time. So that's going to be my answer. Read, yeah. Go read that book. <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot. And which will be the best place to connect with you if my listeners would like to connect with you as uh, afterwards? Yes, um, the best place is my web, my my new website, my current website, uh, and it's just derekandcarry dot com. And the that's spelled. There's a couple of different ways to spell it, so I'll spell it out. Uh, Derek is D E R E K, and then the word and, and then Carry is C A R R I E. So derekandcarry dot com. That's the best place. And if you and if you want to find that book on how to write a book, the the title of that book is actually. <laughs> From, from yeah, we never, men- <laughs> we never huh? mentioned it actually. <laughs> no, I know. We know. Maybe we'll we'll put it in the show notes. Maybe absolutely, the yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, um, the the name of the book is actually "From Your Head to Your Hands," and then the subtitle is "How to Write, Self Publish, and Launch Your Book." You can find that on Amazon. It's it's Kindle only, so you can find that one on Amazon, or you can go to Amazon and type in my name, Derek Olson. Um, and it'll pop up. Mm-hmm. Um, 
on Amazon. Yeah, I will put that in the show notes as well for, for oh, those who, who will visit later on and get the notes. Okay, well, thank you so much for spending this uh, almost an hour uh, with, with us. Thanks a great. lot for your great insight and for your stories. Uh, I'm sure um, you put your input, you, you had your input in um, encouraging our listeners. And I'm sure that our listeners got really useful tips from what you've done. And uh, we wish you success with your upcoming books since you're writing new ones and with your new brand. Great. Thank you so much for having me, Annie. I had a blast and good luck to everyone. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Well, that was it for today. Thank you very much for listening to this episode. And uh, before I say goodbye to you, I would like to ask for your support. As you know, Right to be Read is a newborn podcast and it's making just its first baby steps at iTunes. So um, I would really like to ask you to take just two minutes and with one click support me enormously by subscribing to my podcast. You can't even imagine what a huge impact it can make. Just a reminder that uh, you can get free writer resources at annealexander.com slash free. Besides that, don't forget to check out the closed Facebook group of this podcast where you can meet new people, discuss different things about writing and get support, encouragement and inspiration. The Facebook group is at www.facebook.com slash groups slash write to be read two as a number and B as a letter. Well, thank you once again for listening to this episode. Have a nice day and we'll meet really soon. 